Hello students. We have seen the theories behind photochemical reactions, the laws of photochemistry and the laws of absorption. Now in this uh, presentation, we shall look at the quantum yield of a photochemical reaction, which is related to the kinetics of photochemical reaction. Now, uh, be before looking into what is quantum yield, let, just, let us just look at what is a photochemical reaction. Just a brief look at what is a photochemical reaction. A photochemical reaction can be designated as this general equation which involves a reactant absorbing light and forming an excited molecule which then transforms to a product. It is this first step wherein the reactant absorption, absorbing light which involves or absorption of light or involves the presence of light. The second process wherein the excited reactant molecule gets transformed into a product does not require light. So we can say that photochemical reaction has two processes or can be divided into two steps, two processes, the primary step and the secondary step. Now it is in the primary step that the light absorption happens and uh, in the secondary process it can happen even in the absence of light. It, it can also be considered as a dark reaction. Now, uh, the, it, so, uh, the rate of a reaction, of a photochemical reaction will be uh, more decided by the rate of the primary process wherein absorption of light happens, how much absorption of light happens, etc. Now, the photochemical reaction is also governed by two laws of photochemistry, that is the Grotthus Draper law and the Stark Einstein law. The Stark Einstein law is basically related to the uh, primary process wherein the absorption of light happens. Now, uh, when we look at the quantum yield, what is a quantum yield or quantum efficiency? Let us uh, see what it is. It is designated by phi, quantum yield or quantum efficiency is designated by phi which is equal to the ratio of the molecules reacted to the number of quantum radiation absorbed. Okay, so the uh, num if the number of molecules reacted and the quantum radiation absorbed is the same, then you get phi equal to 1. Now, uh, phi can also take up different values like phi can be less than 1, greater than 1, let us see all those. When phi equal to 1, it, the, such reactions follow the stark Einstein law, strictly follows the stark Einstein law. For example, the reaction between sulfur dioxide and chlorine to give SO2Cl2 in the presence of light. So this reaction obeys the law of photochemical equation or stark Einstein law. So here, the uh, absorbed quantum of radiation and the number of molecules reacting in a given time is the same, the ratio is 1. Now, phi can also take up values less than 1 or greater than 1. Okay, phi can be less than 1 or greater than 1. Now, this particular uh, uh, condition, situation happens when the primary process is followed by a secondary process. That means not all absorbed light may get conformed to a, transformed into a product. It depends upon the secondary process too. Now let us see how or what are the reactions which involves high quantum yield or wherein phi is greater than 1. Now let us take up the example of formation of HCl gas from hydrogen and chlorine. Now this, when we look at the mechanism of uh, formation of HCl from hydrogen and chlorine, we can see that the, it involves a chain reaction and uh, the phi value is 10 to the power of 4 to 10 to the power of 6. Phi value you can see here 10 to the power of 4 to 10 to the power of 6. It's such a high quantum yield. So for every photon of light absorbed, lot of HCl or a large amount of HCl is Produced. Now, this reaction follows the chain reaction having three basic steps the chain uh, initiation step, the chain propagation step, and the chain termination step. 
the chain initiation step is the primary process, the chain propagation step and the chain termination step is the secondary process. This secondary process does not require light but the primary process needs light and in the primary process it is the decomposition or breaking up of chlorine molecule to form chlorine free radical. So that happens in the presence of light, only in the presence of light. The next step, that is the secondary process, which is the chain propagation step, does not require light and there HCl is formed when this chlorine free radical formed in the primary process reacts with hydrogen and uh, 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 hydrogen free radical and HCl is formed and this hydrogen free radical will combine with chlorine to form HCl and chlorine free radical. So the chlorine free radical is regenerated, this will again react with hydrogen. So this continues, propagation step continues until no more chlorine free radical is available. So one free radical, chlorine free radical generated can uh, initiate a sequence of rest of the process or secondary process. So and then the reaction can be terminated by the chain termination step wherein the two chlorine free radicals combine to form chlorine molecule that is quenching of the free radicals. No more free radicals are available. So here you can see here if one molecule of chlorine is uh, decomposed or converted into chlorine free radicals then the rest of the reaction continues more of chlorine and hydrogen will be used up. So that is why you have a, such a high quantum yield for this particular reaction. Now let us see what other reasons are there for having high quantum yield. Now this, these are the reasons of, for high quantum yield. Now a photoactivated molecule may initiate a series of thermal reactions. That is what we have seen in the earlier case. Another reason why there can be a high quantum yield is the heat evolved in a secondary process. That is, a, if the secondary process is an exothermic reaction, that will activate other molecules. So there will be thermal, uh, the thermal reaction will be in, enhanced due to the production of heat or emission of heat in energy during the secondary process. And third reason may be the uh, photoactivated molecules will collide with other molecules and activate them. They, the, the, the other rest of the molecules will be converted to uh, activated molecules. And finally, it can also be that the intermediate form during the photochemical reaction may act as a catalyst. So these are the four, re four reasons, basic reasons for high quantum yield for phi greater than 1. The photoactivated molecule will initiate the series of thermal reaction, the secondary processes, or the heat evolved during the secondary process will activate the rest of the molecules, or the photoactivated molecule will collide with other molecules and activate them, or there may be an intermediate production form, uh, product formation which will which will act as a catalyst and increase the rate of the reaction. So these are the reasons for high quantum E. Now let us look at the equation reaction for a photochemical reaction with low quantum E. Now here we are taking the example of hydrogen combining with bromine to form HBr in the presence of light. Now here the phi value is 0 0.01, very low phi value. Now here also the reaction proceeds via chain reaction. And you have the chain initiation step, the primary step, the chain propagation step and the chain termination step. Now the primary step or the chain initiation step involves the formation of bromine free radical in the presence of light. As usual, I mean the case where we have seen with chlorine. Then the secondary step or the chain propagation step, here the bromine free radical combines with hydrogen to form HBr and hydrogen free radical. This particular step is endothermic in nature. The hydrogen free radical combine with bromine to form HBr and bromine free radical. And another propagation step, the hydrogen free radical will combine with HBr to form hydrogen and bromine free radical. Now look at this third propagation step. This does not involve the formation of HBr 
but it is resulting in the formation of the reactants. So there is a reverse of reaction. So the reaction is not proceeding for the product formation, but it is going reverse to the product formation reaction. Actually, it is a reverse reaction of this first propagation step. So the first propagation step, another reason is that it is endothermic in nature. So it is taking up heat energy. So the, there will not be heat in, uh, available for further reactions. So we will have to provide heat. So you can see here that in the formation of HBr, the first propagation step and the last propagation step, these two steps will bring down the reaction rate or will bring down the efficiency okay so uh, the rapid propagation will not happen here because the reaction is endothermic in nature and here the reverse reaction of the product formation happens it results in the formation of reactants so here also the reaction will be uh, pulled back so as a result the efficiency of the reaction comes down Hence, the formation of HBr will have low efficiency or low quantum yield with phi is equal to 0 0.01. So, remember it is these two steps. The formation of HBr by combining Br dot, Br free radical and hydrogen which is endothermic and also the reaction with, uh, with the product and hydrogen free radical to form the reactant back. These two reactions steps will pull down the efficiency of the for uh, this particular photochemical reaction. Now let us see the other reasons of uh, for low quantum yield. Now the one is the photochemical activated molecule may undergo quick non-radiate radiate, radiator deactivation that is the molecules may be deactivated. It may not produce any radiation or it may not um, get re, uh, involved in any reactions. Now, another reason will be the photoactive molecule may undergo radioactive deactivation. That is, the molecule will absorb light, but it will not result in the product formation. But it will radiate, or it will give away the absorbed radiation in the form of fluorescence or phosphorescence. Now, with the another reason may be the photoactive molecule will undergo other reaction is done the desired one. So, the, the case which we discussed earlier for the HBr, the desired reaction is formation of HBr, but the third step in the propagation uh, process, we are getting the formation of H free radical and Br2. So, there, uh, sorry, hydrogen and Br free radical, there uh, the HBr is used. So, that's not a desired reaction. And then the uh, the, that is the primary photoactivation step or may be reversed. And finally, some of the reactions leading to the product may be energetically unfavorable, resulting in reverse reaction. So, these are the reasons for low quantum yield. Alright, so we have seen the react an example for the reaction for high quantum yield and the reaction for low quantum yield and also the reasons for both the uh, types of cases that is for high quantum yield and low quantum yield. If you have any more clarifications to be done, please feel free to ask me. Thank you.